In this tutorial, I'll be showing you exactly how I created this blog in Wix. The site is live, so you can access it at any time using the link in the description box below. And it didn't cost me anything to set up because I'm using one of Wix's own domain names for hosting, but more on that a little bit later on. Now the object of this video is so that you can follow along and create something very similar on your own site. This is a substantial tutorial, but you can skip ahead at any time using the time tags, which are also in the description box below. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. And the first step is to create an account on Wix. To do this, either Google Wix, or if you're happy to use my affiliate link, you'll find that right below this video, where it says, click here to get started. Having clicked the link, you'll land on a similar page to this one, and we'll start by creating a new account. Enter an email address and password, and press sign up. We're then taken through the first of several questions that Wix uses to ascertain the best experience for our needs. So first up, we're asked whether we're creating the website for ourselves or for a client, and since it's for us, we'll choose Get Started. We're then asked to describe the type of website we're creating, and it's worth being as specific as possible here because Wix will recommend templates for our site based on the answers we provide. We're now given the opportunity to add features to our site. Since we said we're creating a blog on the previous screen, the blog feature is already chosen by default. But you can also add other features such as discussion forums, chat boxes, and online stores. For now though, I recommend keeping things very simple and unticking everything except the blog. Finally, we're asked whether this is our first attempt at creating a website. And since it is, I'll click here. We're now getting into the nuts and bolts of the setup process. And the first real decision to make is whether to create your blog using Wix's ADI, Wix's Artificial Design Intelligence Platform, or edit one of Wix's existing templates using their main editor. Now this is where I differ from many of the Wix tutorials on YouTube. The aim of the ADI platform is to take the complexity out of the website creation process. And in all honesty, if you are a beginner, this is the option I would choose. Other tutorials recommend going straight to using the Wix editor and editing one of their many templates. However, I don't recommend taking this approach because many of the templates available on Wix are not suited to creating a simple blogging site. They're more appropriate for creating an online store or a website for an established business. And whilst Wix will direct you to their blogging templates, some of which look really great, if we take a closer look, you'll see that they include many features you're unlikely to use as a startup blogger. Take, for example, this one, which uses a nice full screen background image. If we look at the menu along the top, you can see it includes a discussion forum, a members area, and down the bottom here, we have a live chat box, all of which will be superfluous when you're just getting started. If you were to choose a template like this, your first job would be to remove all of the features that you don't need, and all of this extra work will likely result in confusion, frustration, and potential problems down the road. Once you're up and running and found your feet, you can add all of these features back at any point and switch to using the main editor. But for now, I recommend using ADI. So we'll click on Start Now, and the first step is to give our website a name. Having entered your name into ADI, if you have an existing website you're transitioning from, you can enter the details here. And if you run an office, you can locate it using Google Places. However, neither of these are relevant to us, so we'll move on. On this next screen, you can add a few more details about your business. The information you provide here will be displayed publicly on your website, so I recommend not using any of your personal details. This is more if your business has its own office. Likewise, if you signed up to Wix using a personal email address, I would recommend creating a separate address for your business and using that one here. A simple Gmail account will suffice for now. All these details are optional, so feel free to leave them blank. The next few steps differ depending on whether you have a logo or not. I suspect you don't have one, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll show you both scenarios. Having added a logo, Wix will use the colors in your logo to create a color palette for your site, and will use these colors to recommend three different templates for your blog. Your logo, social media accounts, and other details will be automatically added to the template. 
If you don't have a logo, Wix will instead offer you a few different font and color options. The aim is to choose a font and color combination that appeals most to you. These options here aren't great, so don't fret over this too much as there are more themes available in the ADI editor and you'll be able to switch themes until you've found one that you like. However, for now, I'll keep everything simple and choose minimal. We're then provided with three homepage designs for our blog. You can see that because we didn't provide a logo, Wix uses the title of our site instead, which I often think works better. Again, you can alter the template later to suit your taste, so don't fret over this too much, but choose one that has the most sections that appeal to you. For example, I like the full size image of this design and the contact form at the bottom here. The picture of the drone doesn't really reflect the content that I'll be writing about, but I can easily change this image later, so I'll go with this option. The final step is to add additional pages to your site. As before, you can add pages later, so don't worry if you're not sure about this. To be honest, if you're starting from scratch, you probably have very little content anyway, so I'd hold off adding any more pages until later. Click on Edit Site to finish the setup process and your site will open in the ADI editor. Before we jump in and start amending our website design and creating blog posts, a quick overview of the Wix workspace and its menus. Here we are in the ADI editor, but when you close out of Wix and log in tomorrow, you probably won't automatically see this screen. What you'll likely see is your dashboard. Your dashboard is an overview of your site and is where you can manage the administration of your site. Here you can do things like giving people access to edit your website on your behalf. You can create a mailbox for your site to receive email and you can purchase your own domain name which will require you to sign up to one of Wix's paid plans. In the site actions menu you can do things like change the name of your site, duplicate it or even completely delete it if you're not happy with it. Duplicating your site can often be useful for testing any changes before making those changes on your main website. Clicking on Edit Site will take you back into the ADI editor. Selecting Blog in the left hand menu will display all of the blog posts that you've created. Currently you can see there are three dummy posts to give us an idea of our site's layout, but this is where you'll go to start posting your own articles once you're finished with your design. Finally in this section is your account options. Here you can change your email address, password, and if you have signed up to one of the paid plans, you can view your billing details here. If we jump back into the editor, let's have a look at the other menus that are available. Along the top is the main menu. Working from left to right, the first option you have shows you the current page you're editing and allows you to switch between pages should you wish to edit a different page. At the moment you can see that our website only consists of the main home page and below that is posts which if we click on it allows us to edit how each post or article will be displayed on our site. Posts are typically not pages, not like a home page or an about page. For instance they're not typically added to menus which is why it's shown as indented under the main page in this menu. Next to the home page is a settings wheel with additional options and above it is where you can edit your main navigation menu. If we had additional pages we could add them to the menu by clicking on this blue button and we can do things like hide or rename menu items by clicking on the ellipsis icon next to each one. For example if I wanted to refer to my posts as articles rather than posts I'd simply choose rename like so and you'll notice that the menu updates accordingly. The next main menu item is add, where you can add a section to an existing page, a whole new page entirely, or add new features such as a members area, which are listed under apps. If I wanted to add an about section to give my readers a bit of background, I would click add section to page, choose about, followed by a design that I like from the options available, then I would simply drag it to my home page like so. If you have a lot to write in your about section, you may prefer to create a whole about page rather than just a section. In this case, you can delete the section by clicking on the ellipsis icon and choosing delete. Then choose add page and Wix provides multiple options and designs based on the type of page you wish to add. 
Notice how we are now editing the about page rather than the home page and how the menu has automatically updated to display our two pages rather than the sections that it displayed previously. However, my preference is to have an about section rather than a whole page. So I'll delete the about page and then re-add the about section as I did before. Alternatively, I could simply click undo several times from the main menu to reverse the changes that I made. The design menu option is where you can change the theme of your website, which will change both the fonts and the colors used across your site. Here you can see you have lots more variety than the six choices that were shown during the setup process. If you'd rather not change the whole theme, but just either the fonts or the color palette, you can select these individually from the design menu too. Finally, for this menu item, you can add text animations to some of your main headings. Hover over each animation to see how they work. Fly is my favorite, so I'll select it like so. Manage is another way of installing apps and accessing those apps you have already installed, which in this case will be our blog. Once finished in an app, you can get back to the editor by clicking on the X. As already mentioned, next to the Manage menu are the options to undo and redo any changes that you've made. And you don't need to worry about saving since Wix auto saves your work as you go along. The next menu item is one of the most important and that is switching between the desktop and mobile view of your site. Since most of your readers will be viewing your site on mobile, it's imperative to continually check that the layout is correct in both viewports. Note that in mobile view, images will be cropped in from left and right and paragraphs of text will appear longer and therefore less easy to read. It's also worth noting that changes made to the layout in desktop view do affect the layout in mobile view, but not vice versa. So you can adjust things for mobile without ruining the look and feel of your website in desktop view. And I'll demonstrate this a little bit later on. Next on the menu is help, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then we have site, which is where you can access your dashboard and other main settings. If you have more than one site in Wix, you can switch to it by clicking on my sites. And if you prefer to use Wix's main editor over ADI, this is where you would access it. The bell will display any notifications if you have them and click on upgrade to switch to one of Wix's paid premium plans. Preview allows you to see how your website looks before you go live. And when you're ready to go live, just click on publish. So that is a look at the dashboard and the menus in ADI. Now let's get on with the fun stuff of editing our website. So we're now ready to start changing the look and feel of our website to our preferred design. We've already looked at how to add additional sections and pages and how to switch between those pages. Editing the design and layout of a page is the same regardless of which page you're working on. Each page is split into sections and you can edit the section by hovering over it. The section will be highlighted in blue and some options will appear. The options available depend on the section that you're editing. So if I hover over the header section, for example, you can see that I have the option to either edit or design. Whereas if I hover over the banner image, I have an additional ellipsis menu and the option to move the whole section down the page. To begin, I want to center my title and menu and change the banner image to something that better reflects the content of my site. Simply clicking on the section will display the edit menu and here you can add and remove elements such as the tagline or a logo. Once you have your logo for your site, you can click settings to replace the dummy image. This image manager window will open whenever you're adding or amending an image in Wix. Here you can browse through Wix's own free media gallery or you can use Shutterstock images, but you'll need to pay for those. Since my logo is saved to my computer, I'll click upload media followed by upload from computer. Having uploaded an image, Wix has several tools for adjusting the image and removing the background. When you're happy, click apply. After adding each image, you should get into the habit of providing alt text, which is a short description of what the image represents. This is useful for people visiting your site who are visually impaired, and it also improves your site's SEO performance. Having added my logo, I can then change the layout of my header section by clicking on section design. And here I'll choose this alternate layout, which will center 
the title and my menu. Next, I want to replace the image of the drone with something more appropriate. Again, click on the section to bring up the different settings and I'll start by removing the subtitle and then, as before, I'll click on settings to replace the image. This time, I'll replace the image with something from Wix's gallery. As you can see, Wix recommends some alternatives, but if you don't like these suggestions, you can simply search the whole catalog. I'll go with this one, which has a variety of gadgets. I also want to change the text to read welcome to the faculty of apps, which I can simply amend here. And I think I'll bold faculty of apps so that it stands out against the other text and maybe just increase the spacing a little. There we go, that looks better. Finally, for this section, I want to adjust the height of the section slightly, which I can do by clicking on the ellipsis icon. Then it's just a matter of clicking on the plus or minus sign to change the size of the section to your preference. Moving on to the post section, and there are a couple of changes I'd like to make here. Firstly, I'd like to change the layout of the post grid. To do this, hover over the section and choose design, and I'll go with this second layout. Now, if I click on the ellipsis icon, I can change what is displayed for each post, and I want to remove the login button since there isn't a members section on my site, and therefore there's no need to log in. If you notice, the author's name is currently using the account name Wix gave me when I signed up, but we can change this later when we start creating our own blog post. Next up, there's a button in my about section that I want to link to the contact section below it. Again, click on the section to bring up the settings menu. Here you can change the title and description and choose which elements you wish to display. However, I want to link the button to the contact section below. Adding a link to a button is the same as creating a text link. You can link to a variety of different sources, including external URLs, documents that you may wish people to download, and an email address. But to link to a page or a section of a page, choose page. Select the page you wish to link to, followed by the section, and then click Done. You can test the link works by previewing your site. If the link does work correctly, it should scroll nicely to the next section, which it does. Excellent. Now there are a couple of changes I'd like to make to the contact section. I don't want to display my address, phone number, or the map below. And I also want to remove the phone number, address, and subject lines from the form field since I don't need that information and it's unlikely anyone will want to provide it anyway. Clicking on the section, I'll untick the address field and phone number, and then I'll choose Edit to amend the form. And then it's just a matter of deleting the fields that I don't need, and I'll remove the titles since it's already pretty self-explanatory. To finish up, I'll just remove the map, like so. And that completes the contacts section. You'll notice in the footer I have some social media links to Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn, which I don't use. If you had a Facebook page to accompany your website, you could just edit the URL by clicking on the pencil icon here. But since I don't have any of these, I'll simply untick them all. I do, however, have an Instagram account, which I'll add at the bottom here, and you'll see Wix automatically updates the footer with the Instagram logo. So that completes the editing process. Now I can preview the design and see how it looks on both desktop and mobile. Now I'm not happy with how the text sits above the banner image on my mobile site, so I'll go back and edit this. Remember, layout changes in the mobile website does not affect the desktop website. So I can change the banner image section like so, which now looks good. And if I switch back then to the desktop view, you can see that nothing has been altered. So that completes the website setup. Now let's start writing some blog posts. If you're in the editor, you can access your blogging features by clicking on manage and blog. But my preference is to come out of the editor entirely and open up the dashboard. Here on the left menu, we have blog, where you can see the dummy blog articles created by Wix. To delete these, click on the ellipsis icon next to each one and choose move to trash. To create your first post, click on get started. This opens up the blog post editor, which is much the same as any basic text editor with a menu at the top with the standard text formatting options. 
Rather than watch me type a blog post, I'll use one from my existing Faculty of Apps website, which I'll copy and paste into the editor. I'll also add a title, and further down the article, I'll then add an image. You can add a new element to your website by clicking on the plus icon. Here you have several different elements you can add to your post, including dividers and tables, but I'll click on image. As before, when we were editing the website, this will open the Wix image manager window, and I'll add an image that I have saved on my computer. Once loaded, click add to page. I can also add the YouTube video I created to accompany this article. To do this, I'll quickly switch over to YouTube and copy the URL. As before, click on the plus button where you want to add your new element, and this time we'll choose video, and I'll paste in the URL into the space provided. And there we are, my first blog post including a video and photos. Before publishing your article, it's worth going through some of the settings in the left hand menu. Firstly is the settings option where you can add a feature image. This image will be displayed in your post grid on your home page. Just as before, select one using the Wix image manager. Here is where you can also change your author name to something other than your account username. Add a new author and give them a name. If you have a profile picture, you can add one here too. In the advanced settings, you can add a description that may get displayed in the post grid depending on the layout you have chosen. If you don't write a description, Wix will use the first paragraph from your article. If you'd rather not allow comments on your post, you can disable them here too. Next are your SEO settings, which will be displayed by search engines such as Google and Bing. If you don't want your article to appear in the search engine results, you can disable this here. But bear in mind, this is how most people will find your site. As you increase the number of articles on your site, you may wish to start grouping them by categories. You can do that here, but I wouldn't worry until you have at least 20 or 30 articles. Finally, monetization is only possible if you sign up to one of Wix's premium plans. If you had published your website, you can now preview your post by clicking on this button. It's grayed out for me because I've yet to publish my site. However, I'm fairly happy with the post, so I'll publish it anyway without previewing it. You can publish it immediately, or you can save it as a draft, or schedule the post to be published later, should you be keeping a publishing schedule that your readers are used to. Having published my post, the final step is to go live with my site, so I'll click here to take me back to the editor. Back in the editor, we can now see our new post in the post grid, and ah, unfortunately my feature image has been cropped, so I'd either have to change the image or change the layout of my post grid to suit wider images. Once you're happy with everything on your site, the last step is to hit publish. Now, since I'm not using one of Wix's paid plans, my website will use the domain name provided by Wix. You can change the ending of the name to reflect your site, but ideally, if you're hoping to build a business around this site, you should consider using a custom domain name that represents your business and your brand. Signing up for one of Wix's paid plans comes with a free domain name, so that's something worth considering. Alternatively, if you're happy using one of Wix's domain names, hit publish and continue to view your live site. So that completes our tutorial. Visit the website for lots more tips on Wix and all your favorite applications. And if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more free tutorials like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.